I'm not trying to be sensationalist. This is a legitimate question. Why shouldn't I burn this portrait of Mao Zedong? Okay, I'm still going to make that decision by the end of this video, whether or not I am going to set fire to that thing. But we have to discuss, first of all, what this is all about. Why would I do something like this that obviously is going to hurt the feelings of some people, is going to cause a lot of uproar amongst nationalists? Well, there's a very good reason for this. Let's take a look at Mao Zedong and why he is still worshipped in China. It would be foolish to deny just what an impact this one man has had on China. In the beginning, in a more positive way, at least according to most Chinese people I speak to, he is responsible for the new China. He is the person who's responsible for creating the People's Republic of China and getting the Communist Party to take over and become the all-powerful leaders of the country. And this is something that's often used to basically tell everybody how great he is. China wouldn't exist the way it is today if it wasn't for him. But yes, that's true. China wouldn't exist in the way it is today if it wasn't for him. All the bad parts of China would not exist the way they are today if it wasn't for him. Because him and his policies led to the mass famine, starvation and death of tens of millions of Chinese people, if not more. He is worse than Stalin and Hitler combined when it comes to just deaths and horrible, horrible sort of situations. Now, we can go through and we can do a character assassination of Mao if we want. I mean, it's very easy. I've got a lot of archival footage. There's a lot of historical documents that we can look at. We can just go and interview Chinese people who lived through the Great Leap Backward and the Cultural Devolution, the kind of people that were ratting their parents out to the government in order to curry favor with the Communist Party, the kind of people who were responsible for their teachers being beaten to death and being put through struggle sessions. It's all out there. We can do it. The fact that this man decided that killing all of the sparrows was a good idea. He made everybody go out and kill sparrows and beat drums and make sure they couldn't land so they all died of, you know, exhaustion, etc, etc. Which, of course, not having sparrows around, allowed locusts to move in and resulted in terrible famines. Of course, it was too late when he realized and he changed it from sparrows to bedbugs. Let's go kill bedbugs instead of sparrows. Well, well done. You've really made a great piece of progress right there. Same guy who has done terrible things and there's a lot out there like I said this is not a character assassination of this man he's done it for himself and anyone who wants to read up on Mao Zedong can freely do so in their spare time but why is it that I'm threatening to burn this well it's all about respect I lived in China for 14 and a half years and everywhere I went in China especially in the more rural areas you would see pictures of this man on the walls of shops on the walls of people's homes on the money, he's still on the money. This guy who's responsible for so much death and you know depravity is still worshipped as being a great man in China. And I really couldn't understand it at first. You know, you go out in the countryside and there you have a guy who has very proudly showing his Mao Zedong on the wall or you're in a taxi and a taxi driver has a medallion of Mao Zedong hanging from the rear view mirror. And it's because the Communist Party is very good at brainwashing people. And I don't want to use this word brainwashing lightly. I know it's a very easy term to say, oh, people are brainwashed. I'm being legitimate here when saying that they're very good at engineering what people think from a very young age through education and through various different social programs. People still believe that if it wasn't for him, China wouldn't be the way it is. People still believe that he's a great man who 
maybe made a few small mistakes. And if you want to call a few small mistakes murdering millions of people, so be it. You could say the same about Hitler, you could say the same about Stalin. Oh, they're great men, they just made a few small mistakes. And that is the narrative inside of mainland China. Now, a lot of the times when you see people hanging these medallions and these things on their wall, I do believe some of it comes from a point of view of maybe just taking care of their own interests. Because if you're showing loyalty to the party, Mao Zedong being a big part of the Communist Party and something that they cannot divorce from the Communist Party, if you have his portrait up on the wall and especially him and Xi Jinping, you are protecting yourself and your family from a little bit of scrutiny. It's kind of like, oh no, look, we're on your side. It's kind of like those guys who drive around wearing a big American flag, the thin blue line thing, you know, and speed around. And if they get pulled over by the cops, they're like, oh, don't worry, I'm on your side. See, you know, I'm, I support you guys. I wear a thin blue line. It's a kind of like that. It's like if they ever get into trouble and the local authorities come to their shop, they're like, look, I am loyal to the party. Here's a picture of Mao Zedong. So there's a little bit of that going on too. But now let's get to the crux of this. And what made me actually even think of such a ridiculous idea as to burn the portrait of Mao Zedong? Well, it's simple. The behavior of mainland nationalist tourists around the world when it comes to things like other people's rights of free speech. Very recently, it has surfaced that the Lithuanian Hill of Crosses, which is a very religious site where people go and put down their crosses and their wishes, etc. Um, a mainland tourist pulled up a cross that had you know, free Hong Kong written on it and, you know, uh, the fight for democracy stuff. Uh, and she picked it up and she threw it away, you know. <laughs> Very cheerfully saying, oh, our country is great. Um, in Japan, mainland tourists have been caught taking down wishes from, you know, in, in Japanese culture, they've got that system where at the temples you can write a wish on either a piece of paper or on a, on a wooden plaque and you hang it up in a tree or you hang it up at a shrine. And that is, you know, your wish. Mainland tourists have been caught taking those down and throwing them in the trash. In places like Australia and Canada, mainland students and tourists have been caught tearing down free Hong Kong or democracy type Lenin walls, destroying them and vandalizing them. You see, what I'm getting at here is that although I don't agree with Mao Zedong, in fact, I can't stand the man. I think he's an awful, awful tyrant. I did not vandalize his posters when I was in mainland China. Why not? You know, they're everywhere. I can walk into a shop, no one's looking, I can tear it down. I could urinate on one, I could go buy one myself and go and put it on the street and urinate on it, set it on fire, do what I, whatever I want. Well, not really, because if you do that in China, you're liable to get arrested um, and, you know, defacing Mao Zedong or even the money can get you into a lot of trouble. So. Of course, other than the law kind of preventing me from doing it, there was something else that prevented me from destroying posters of this tyrant while I was in China. And that is respect. Respect for Chinese people and respect for their beliefs. Because although I think he's an absolutely terrible man, worse than Hitler and Stalin, worse than Pol Pot, this disgusting man, I still would not try to force my beliefs onto the Chinese people. I would not go ahead and ruin and destroy somebody that they respected, a portrait of somebody that they looked up to and respected because I respect them. However, we are not seeing the same respect from the nationalist Chinese tourists and nationalist Chinese students who come to our countries. They are very happy to tear down anything that we believe in, our freedoms of speech, right? If you want to say that you believe in the democracy of Hong Kong, they don't care. They will vandalize and they will destroy your property because they think that they're doing what's right, because they don't agree with it. If you have a Taiwanese flag somewhere, they will tear it down. 
if you have some kind of an event that says uh, let's drum up support for freeing Tibet or the Uyghurs or something, they will come and boycott and cause trouble and tear it down and vandalize and go ape. That's what they do. And they are not giving us the same respect back that we are giving them. There's a reason why people aren't going around setting these on fire and tearing them apart, and that is respect. And it's about time the nationalist Chinese tourists started giving some of that respect back to the rest of the world. When you are traveling in Australia or Canada or the United States or South Africa or wherever it is you're traveling and you see something that you don't like, for instance, a poster saying, liberate Hong Kong, revolution of our times, or perhaps something saying Taiwan is an independent country, guess what? You are not allowed to go and tear it down. You are not allowed to go and vandalize it. If you do, you are breaking the law. Just like I did not go and vandalize your precious Mao Zedong posters when I was in China. That's why I didn't go and damage your propaganda stuff every time I saw it and didn't agree with it in mainland China. This is called respect and it's something that China needs to learn. So at the end of the day, am I going to burn this portrait of Mao Zedong? No, I'm not going to burn it. And you all know why. Because I respect my Chinese friends. I respect my Chinese family. And I respect Chinese people and their opinions, at least to a certain degree. And while I do not agree with everything that this man stands for, and why, honestly, if I could have met him in real life, just like most people fantasize about, you know, taking out Hitler if they met him in real life, that's something I would have done. At the end of the day, though, because I do respect my Chinese friends, family, and Chinese people, I will not burn this because it's distasteful. Because it shows a massive, massive lack of respect towards the Chinese people. And I would ask that you, if you're a Chinese person, show the same respect when you're overseas in other countries towards people's freedom of speech, towards people's posters, and towards people's, call it what you want, propaganda. You can call us brainwashed. It doesn't matter. Call it whatever you want. But stop vandalizing Lenin walls. Stop vandalizing anything that you don't like. You cannot do that. Show us the same respect that we show you. That's it. And <laughs> for those of you who are awesome, stay awesome. I'll see you next time. And the usual links will come up here. I'm not going to go give the Zippo lighter to my father-in-law because I've got absolutely no reason to have a lighter because I don't smoke. Just don't tell him what I did with it. <laughs>